Hi, everybody. I believe we're more or less ready to get started. So thank you all for joining us for the first annual Equitable Implementation Science week-long training seminar. We're really excited that you're all here joining us. Uh, I'm stepping in for Araceli, who's unfortunately under the weather. So please be patient with us as we're <laughs> scrambling to put together everything that she had prepared for us. But if you have any questions, you could reach out to me or any of the other coordinators. Many of them are outside by the registration table and we'll be happy to help you. Um, so a couple of housekeeping items to get started. First of all, again, thank you for joining us. We're very excited that you're all here. Uh, here are the housekeeping items just before we get started. Um, the door access, doors can't be propped open because apparently there's a lot of important equipment in this building. So we have been for forbidden to keep them open, but we should have um, one of the coordinators standing by the doors at all times. So if you have to leave the building, just let us know um, and we'll let you back in. You can also jot down my cell phone number in case you're stuck. You could always give me a call um, and I'll be happy to help you. The nearest restrooms are just around the corner by the elevators that way. Um, should be easy to find, but again, if you have any problems, you just let me know. We'll be having breaks during and between each session. So uh, there's plenty of time allotted for bathroom breaks and snack breaks. Um, and we have the presentations and session materials ready for today's presentations already downloaded. So if you're a speaker today, should be already pulled up on the, on the computer. Um, but I'll be here to help if there's any technical issues. And we also have wonderful nursing IT with us as well, in case we have any technical issues. Um, if you are not a UM person, you can connect to Kane's guest. And if you are from UM, then you should be able to connect to UMiami Wireless. Again, if it's not working, let us know. Um, and again, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, you can talk to the nearest charm coordinator. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Steve, Dr. Saffron. Hi, welcome everyone. So excited to have you all here. Um, and yeah, welcome to, for those of you that are coming from out of town, welcome to Liquid Air. <laughs> I hope your hair, if you have, if you're fortunate enough to have hair, um, <laughs> survives. Um, and yeah, thank you to everyone. Um, special thanks to the our Charm implement, uh, Equitable Implementation Science Core, which includes the amazing Dr. Audrey Harkness, who did the organizing of this with um, the other members and also Araceli, who sadly can't be here. Um, Dr. Willie Prado, who is our interim provost at UM. So we have, well, we had great institutional support before that, but um, I don't know. Now I feel like we have a little bit of a, I don't know. I've got his cell phone number, so I feel very happy. Uh, and Dr. Mariano Conamori in the back there will be uh, doing some slides and I'll be introducing Charm and its mission and everything. But we are really excited about this. The, this, um, this is part of uh, when we did a renewal for Charm, we went from being a developmental center to being a full center. And we identified not just for HIV research, but at the, at the area generally, uh, a need for more implementation science research. So I personally am super psyched to have this boot camp, so I can hopefully like by the end really understand implementation science research and I'm hoping that that will be the same for all of you all. Um, there's a lot of gray areas as I think we'll be hearing about this week. So um, hopefully we'll We'll learn it, we'll get our interventions in the community, we'll get tons of grant funding, we'll increase, I don't know, uh, yeah, uptake of implement of of stuff of interventions, and we will uh, work towards some of our goals with the HIV epidemic. So CHARM's mission statement. So CHARM is our center for HIV and research in mental health. Our mission is to promote, develop, and support high impact, high quality, community-engaged HIV research addressing mental health and health disparities as a scientific, strategic, and mentoring resource to end the HIV epidemic. So um, our work is community engaged and we're focusing on disparities. So that's why this is not just implementation science on its own, but it's equitable implementation science. And you'll be hearing a bit more what we mean by that uh, throughout the week. These are our core values as a center, as part of our strategic planning, we developed core values. Um, 
that we are multidisciplinary, we recognize equity, we uh, have the core value of inclusion and diversity, and we certainly believe in meaningful community engagement. So those core values should be part of what we do and part of what uh, we'll be learning about this week. Uh, these are our directors. <clears throat> um, myself, I'm the overall director. Dan Feaster and Deborah Jones Weiss are the co-directors. We're um, cross university center. So I'm in the Department of Psychology here on the Arts and Sciences campus. And Feaster and Jones Weiss are over at the medical school, um, Feaster in Public Health Sciences, and Dr. Jones Weiss in uh, Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. These are the fabulous people that I just mentioned, who you will see throughout the week and be interacting with. Um, and uh, this is, a, I think I mentioned kind of that uh, this is a new core. So when we were a developmental center, we had um, only four cores, and now this is our fifth. Um, and these are some of the co-investigators, uh, many of, or all of whom will be here this week and presenting. Um, and to keep things going, I will just mention our other cores. We have the administrative core, which uh, we kind of just organize everything and deal with administrative issues. Rosana is our, um, okay, university title. Manager of research support. Manager of research support. Um, and Mohammed is outside. If you see Mohammed, say hi to him. Be appreciative of Mohammed and Rosanna. They basically do everything. Um, but then every I don't I don't want to say that other people don't do everything, but they kind of are in the people in charge of everything. Um, spam call. Uh, we have a developmental course. So for those of you that are affiliated with CHARM, you can utilize any of the CHARM services, which um, I believe I'll be talking more about later, but the developmental core involves uh, mentoring as well as providing seed funding for pilot projects once a year. Methods core, overall general quantitative methods and qualitative methods, and then mental health disparities and community engagement. We are involved in specifically enhancing that, even though that's um, throughout all the other cores too, it's integrated, but we also specifically kind of pick up the pieces and make sure that we're doing enough uh, community engagement through that core. Audrey, I think you're next. Yes, Dr. Audrey Harkness. I'm supposed to be introducing Audrey Harkness. Oh. I did kind of already introduce yeah, you. Okay. I've been introduced. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It's really um, very exciting to be able to offer this. I remember I came to UM as a postdoc, and I didn't know what implementation science was, but I was interested in implementation science questions, and I started investigating them. And then I discovered there's actually a whole field called implementation science. So it's really wonderful to go from like where we were then to have this whole program, and hopefully those who are interested are really introduced from the beginning um, to the field and you know, uh, made aware of all the amazing resources that this field has to offer and also contributes to the growing field because there's a lot of gray areas and room for exploration, particularly um, in equitable implementation science, which we'll talk more about as well. Um, so hopefully everyone has seen the beautiful agenda that Araceli has put together. I think everyone has a folder with that printed. Um, hopefully everything looks um, accurate in there. Um, we have generally our structure every day we'll be having breakfast every day. Um, we'll have, I think typically about two morning sessions, a lunch where we're gonna have networking activities. We're really hoping um, to bring people together, maybe form some new collaborations um, and you know foster connection through this program. So that's why we're having this in person. That's why we didn't offer an online option um, because we really want to take advantage of the opportunities that come with being together. Um, then we'll typically have about two afternoon sessions and we'll conclude each day with consultation sessions. Um, you do need to sign up for those. Um, there's a link. Um, actually, it'll be in the next slide. Let me see. Well, we'll come to that in a second. I'll talk about consultations momentarily. Um, and if you want digital access to anything, you can scan this QR code right here. Um, Okay. 
All right, so this is kind of um, a bingo card of what's to come for the week. So hopefully everyone completes their card. Um, but essentially, as you can see, we have like a really robust program of content that we're gonna be covering. So what we tried to do was um, think about structuring our week so that those who are maybe more new to implementation science at least get some of the basics to start off um, and then build throughout the week to some more new and uh, different topics. And within all of our different um, uh, sessions, we've asked all of our speakers to really think about the role of equity in whatever it is that they are talking about. So even if, if the title specifically is about, you know, using equitable implementation science to X, Y, Z, it may be more explicit, but there, even if it's a session that doesn't have that explicitly in the title, we're still encouraging all of our speakers to be engaging with the concepts. And we also encourage all of you. So if we have um, a pretty good amount of time for questions at the end of each session. So please, like we wanna make this a collaborative space. If you have questions, if you have ideas you wanna kick around, like this is the space to do it. Um, so you can bring those things to the table as well. Okay, so more on the consultation. So what we try to do was every day that we have speakers, we have those speakers offering consultations at the end of the day. Um, there's not a ton of consultation slots per day. So if there's someone who you do, like maybe after hearing from them speak, you'd like to consult with them, still reach out to um, probably Rosanna until Araceli is back um, and just let um, us know that you're interested in a consultation and we'll see what we can do to make arrangements for you to have a consultation, even if we can't do it that same day. Um, and we're really hoping that everybody leaves here having done at least one consultation. Um, we have lots and lots of slots with lots of different people. Um, you can bring a fully formed idea. Maybe you don't have a fully formed idea and you just wanna kind of play something out and conceptually explore something, that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be a full on AIMS page. It could be anything that you wanna talk through. And don't be intimidated by the 30 minute slot. If you just need 15 minutes, go ahead and just say that, that's fine. Um, so you don't need to take a full slot either. Um, but please do, if you want to do a consultation, put it on the calendar so that we know it happened. Um, so this is the sign up sheet for that um, right there. And if you're having any trouble accessing it, let us know. Okay, we also are evaluating this program, which is really important um, because it's what helps us support the infrastructure of what we are doing. So please don't ignore the emails with um, the Surveys, I know they're a pain, <laughs> um, but they are critical data, as we all know, data is helpful. Um, so everyone should have, raise your hand, if you received a pre-survey before today. I'm not seeing that many hands. Okay, did receive, did receive. Okay, okay, and keep your hand up if you've already done it. Yay, okay, amazing, thank you all. And if you haven't, um, don't be ashamed. Just open the link now and get it started. <laughs> um, so we really want to be able to show how things are changing over time as a result of this or explore that really. Um, so please do go ahead and take those. Um, there will also be a daily survey at the end of each day. Those are super fast. Please, please, please fill those out. And then the last one will be sent on the last day of the workshop. So thanks for taking the time to do those. Okay, um, one more thing I'm going to say before I pass it over. Um, is, as I said, one of the concepts we were trying to really think about through this week is what does equitable implementation science really mean? And what is equitable implementation science versus just implementation science? They're both important um, and we wanna engage with both concepts throughout the week. So um, Rosanna is pointing at something. Yes, okay, post-its. Um, so what we're gonna be doing throughout the week, we're gonna have some giant post-its plus some mini post-its. Um, and so what we would like to invite people to do throughout the week is at any point, make your contributions to these post-it board things and think about what does equitable implementation science, like as you're engaging with what you're hearing throughout the week, as you're thinking about this, maybe even at this point, like right now, what do different pieces of equitable implementation science mean to you? So it doesn't have to be like the whole field, like it could be a little piece, like, okay, if I'm thinking about implementation determinants, how do I think about equity within that? Or if I'm thinking about implementation outcomes, what is, how do I measure that? So it can be all these different little pieces. And what we're hoping is by the end of the week to really co-define what we mean by this concept. And so we actually have a session at the end of the week where we'll be distilling everything that people have shared throughout the week. So that, that activity's success 
rests on the assumption that everyone will engage with the activity. So please do that. Um, and you can do that anytime. We have lots of breaks. Um, so you can just go ahead and drop whatever ideas are coming to your mind. And we'll try to prompt you as well to remember to do that throughout the week. But those post-its will be in the back for you to just drop any ideas that you're thinking about at any point. Um, and we will distill that together toward the end. And I think that's it about that. Are there any questions about that activity? Okay. All right, so next um, we are going to hear from Mariano Kanamori, who I am supposed to introduce, and he is a wonderful co-director of the program and and ending cook. the HIV, and he's a very good cook. He's inviting us all over for dinner on Friday. And he has great shoes. Okay, thank you, Mariano. <laughs> okay, good morning, um, and um, thank you for being here. Um, we are very excited about this um, summer program, and and I will just share with you that um, in 2018, I attended one similar summer training program that was organized by by the <laughs> Control Center, Claro, and, and that led to my first pilot studies that then um, supported some of my R01 submissions, so this can be very helpful for your career development. So NIH defines implementation science as the study of methods to promote integration of research findings and evidence into healthcare policy and practice. According to NIMH, implementation science studies are needed to better understand the process of adoption, integration, scaling up, and sustainment of evidence-based interventions at multiple levels. Implementation is different from implementation science. The goal of this week is to talk about implementation science. In other words, we do not, uh, we want to extend our work. We don't, we, sometimes we just want to understand whether one intervention uh, increased knowledge, you no, know, and that's it. But in implementation science, we want to understand why this intervention was useful, why the intervention needed to be adapted whether we are reaching those who are actually in need or not. Um, so, so that is what we are going to learn um, during um, this week. I am proud to be here with Dr. Um, Portugal Ravine. Um, well, a colleague, mentor, friend, we have been working together in many uh, projects. First, they were just grant submissions, and now they are funded projects. And, and many things that I'm going to talk um, during this week is because of what I have learned from, from Borsike and Laura and me. So thank you for being here and for continuing sharing your knowledge. Um, so I think that for the next slide, we, we are going to have Dr. Corrado. <laughs> so good morning, everybody. First of all, um, let me welcome all of you who are from out of town um, to the University of Miami. It's really great to have you here. And I uh, haven't seen some folks in a while and others whose work I know well. Um, it's really great to meet you um, in person, even though in the case of Dr. Borsica, for example, I was standing next to her. I'm glad I did say good morning, though. I was very polite, and uh, but I didn't recognize her by face, but surely know her, know her, her work. So all of us have done work across the, uh, the continuum from basic science um, research, um, such as collecting data as we think about intervention development, whether that be quantitative and qualitative data. And then of course it goes through different stages of, of intervention development and testing, including doing efficacy studies, effectiveness studies and implementation science studies, which we, we answer a number of different questions, really thinking about all of these steps. And by the way, this slide is a little bit outdated. There is, um, um, this was originally published by the National Academy of Medicine, um, the Institute of Medicine then, back then, and um, Hendricks Brown, I think, has the, the most recent version of the slide. But going off into the um, implementation science questions, thinking about um, exploration, adoption, sustainability of these interventions. And this is where some of those hybrid trials come into place when you're looking at more than one of these research questions. How do we go to the next slide? Mm -hmm. Oh, there is that. I didn't see it. <laughs> okay. Um, so there are um, 
Um, okay. <laughs> so given existing HIV and mental health disparities and disparities in the implementation of HIV mental health intervention, this uh, core um, has an explicit focus on equitable implementation science. Equitable implementation science is critical for ending the HIV epidemic. And includes um, theories, models, and frameworks such as this um, implementation research logic model. So this implementation um, um, research logic model has different uh, components, and we are going to learn how to um, uh, design um, each component for a grant proposal during this week, particularly for the determinants. Um, we are, for instance, we are going to have um, Kyle Self and Dr. Ariana Johnson. Um, they are going to show us how to use photo voice to understand what are the determinants um, for a successful implementation. Um, we are particularly we particularly use the the CFIR framework to understand what are barriers, what are the facilitators, what are the environmental structures, policies, and other factors that will influence the success of our um, in, um, our in, in, uh, our project. Um, we are going to um, adapt evidence-based interventions to e equitable benefit different populations. Um, for instance, some of them are um, the, the prep, prep exposed to prophylaxis prep and other um, uh, interventions that have been proven to be effective um, in clinical trials. I already talked about the determinants, and then we are going to talk uh, about the, the, the implementation strategies that includes the developing and testing of implementation strategies that address these determinants to achieve equitably implementation adoption reach. Uh, sometimes we can use um, the ERIC uh, implementation um, strategies that are actually designed to, uh, to standardize the language that we use in implementation science. So we actually use the same words for um, things that are very similar. And then for the outcomes, uh, uh, EIIs involve evaluating the extent to which implementation strategies yield to equitable implementation and service outcomes. There are two types of um, outcomes. One is more about implementation science. And here, for instance, we would like to understand whether our um, in interventions are reaching those who are at the highest risk for HIV in our region, whether those who are staying in our program are actually those who are experiencing the highest um, uh, HIV incidence in our region. And then we have the clinical um, outcomes that um, relates to uh, the proportion of people who, uh, for instance, initiate PrEP or the percentage of individuals who increase their position in the PrEP cascade or have more appropriate knowledge about HIV prevention. Uh, that is what I should say. All right, so so I have two two jobs here to do. Tell us, tell you a little bit about our, our boutique mentoring program and our micro grant opportunities. Um, so on the next slide, do I go to the next slide? Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. So with respect to the um, the boutique mentoring program, when the uh, the charm compete was being written about two years ago, two and a half years ago, see something like that. Yep. yep. So we were thinking, and as we were thinking about this EIS score, we were thinking about what are things that we wanted to embed within the EIS score. And one of those two things that was that we wanted to have a boutique mentoring program. In addition to having this particular um, workshop once a year, we also wanted to have another opportunity for early career investigators that was going to be a little bit more focused, a little bit more tailored, um, and really give these individuals the best possible mentoring experience. And so we have um, our first round of our boutique mentoring program that will run from September of this year through August of next year. So if you are looking for a phenomenal opportunity, all right, now is the time to sign up. 
who's eligible? Not only early stage investigators from the University of Miami, but our sister institutions, Florida State University, UCF, Florida International University, Nova Southeastern. So all of you who want to apply, please do so. Here are details on the application deadline. There's a QR code. I'm sure Rosanna and others are responsible for this. July 31st is the deadline by which to apply. You will have a network of individuals who are senior scholars in EIS working with you throughout the year to really help you prepare um, an independent NIH grant, whether that be an early career training grant, uh, certificate K, whether that be your first R01. But it really shows, really the goal here is not just that first grant, but hopefully what will be a network of mentors that you will continue to work with for, for life, right? I mean, many of us develop phenomenal relationships in different types of mentoring programs. So if you're interested, and if you're not interested, by the way, we hope to convince you to become interested by the end of today, um, certainly by the end of the week. Yes? So if you're an early stage career investigator, However, not situated in one of these institutions, then you're not eligible. You're not for this round, but you should give us feedback because things evolve over time, right? We, we brought in some of these new partner institutions in this most recent round of, of CHARM. And, um, and I think we're always looking to, to add additional partners. So by the way, you should totally let us know. Of course, thank you for the question. Second thing is, is you know, so much of implementation is, um, you know, doing some, some work with, with partners, right? With community partners, et cetera. And this work cannot happen here at a university, an academic institution. It really requires that bridge between the two. And so one of the things, um, you know, that we do in collaboration with one of our other course is um, to, you know, to fund these five relatively small $5,000 micro grants. That's a partnership between an academic institution and a community partner. The community partner can be the lead. And in fact, we actually encourage that um, to be the case. And again, um, if you're from FIU, um, UCF, NOVA, SSU, you're also eligible. If you are a community partner, you have to be in the South Florida region um, to be eligible for, for these micro grants. On the right-hand side, you see the details. Applications are due at the end of um, next month, and they will be awarded soon, soon thereafter. So again, these are just some wonderful opportunities that we encourage all of you here to apply to. Um, just a couple of logistic things before I turn it over and I present our next guest. If you have one of these black boxes where you have your computer plugged in and you think that your computer is getting a lot of juice, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Because unless the box is plugged into the socket on the floor, then it's not working. Okay? Some sockets don't have popcorn. They don't have a thing. They don't oh, have so thing. Then, it, then you may have it's to remove. Um, but I, I know this has happened to several of us over here in the back, so you all may want to check on your computer to get some juice. So in terms of equity, whoever needs power the most, <laughs> 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 the thing that works. <laughs> so we that that's works. That's one. Second, we know it's a little warm in here. The AC has been set to a lower temperature. We hope you can feel the difference. If not, we'll bring these shades down. Even you can, we, sometimes we can put the AC at 60 degrees so because it's so hot outside and the sun coming in. Um, so if not, we'll bring these, um, these shades down. And with that said, I'd like to introduce our guest, um, which is Dr. Borskin. 